You're out of practice. You're out of practice. Better. Welcome back into the Petty Clinic Low T Bears. And I did not blink one time during that entire intro. Didn't blink one time. Uh, let's talk about sports. Couch sports. Baylor baseball is in action tomorrow at 9 a.m. Nine bells. We do be working, so we're, I, we're actually going to do that. We're going to come into the studio tomorrow morning. We're going to have donuts in the morning, and we're going to watch the game at 9 a.m. Right? That check out with you. Like, will you be here to do that? Yeah, yeah. N 9 a.m. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah, I, I need to watch the Baylor baseball game. We all need to watch it. Everybody's got to watch. It's going to be on. Uh, Big 12 now, ESPN Plus is Big 12 now, something like that. So we'll check it out. Previewing tomorrow's game, we're going to be joined by Jeff Haxton. We're not going to be joined by Jeff Haxton now. That's all right. That's what it just happens sometimes. Folks get busy. Life happens. You know, you got kids and you got to, you just got things to do. He's on the road right now to Oklahoma City. Checking out the bracket. I'm going to go through the bracket and get predictions and game scores and what I think is going to play out in the Big 12 tournament. Tomorrow's game. How about this pitching matchup? Cam Cayley, the left-handed pitcher for Baylor, 2-1 this season, a 4-1-5 ERA. He's a freshman, and he's facing off against another pitcher that you would say, like, okay, that's very interesting that Texas Tech's not throwing a guy that, like, I we've seen or that has done damage this season for the most part. Their pitcher, Mason Montgomery, 3-3 three three on the year with a 4-3-6 ERA. And you say, well, Drake, that doesn't scare me very much at all. And I would then say to you, you're exactly right. It doesn't scare me much either. Baylor facing off against a pitcher that only has a 3-3 three and three record, a 4-3-6 ERA in what they're going to throw out in Mason Montgomery. So I'm looking right now at Texas Tech's stats, what Montgomery has done this season. And I'm not like, there's just nothing that impressive here in what Baylor is going to have to see tomorrow. 4-3-6 ERA. He, like I said, 3-3. Three and three. 12 appearances, 11 games started, 53 innings. He's allowed 44 hits in those 53 innings. 27 runs, 26 earned runs. He's walked 23 guys, but he has 65 strikeouts. Solid strikeout pitcher, 53 and two-thirds. He's allowed 12 doubles, four, oh, four triples, and eight home runs. Patrick Montverde for them has allowed eight as well. Those are both tops on the team. Eight home runs. Mason Montgomery is a long ball pitcher, batters bat 228 against him. And he is just, he is, again, three and three. Cam Cayley, the freshman's trotting out there for Baylor. His stats are a little inflated. Cam has played really, really well this season, especially as a freshman. He started the year a little bit slower, so his stats aren't really reflective of how he's gone, especially the last couple outings that Cam Cayley has thrown. So I don't, I mean, it's just tough to give you perspective on Cam Cayley and his season stats when he hasn't been in the lineup consistently, and he's going to be out there due to injury. You know, Blake Helton probably not going to play. Tyler Thomas is not going to play. You're keeping those guys. You're resting those guys up a little bit. Some nagging injuries to keep them out of there. Moving forward, you're going to need them late postseason. The first time these two teams met, Baylor went out there and made an absolute flipping statement. Tyler Thomas on the bump threw well against Texas Tech. Baylor went up 6-0 early. They were up 7-1 going into the fourth. They ended up winning it 12-4, the final score in that one. For Texas Tech, their starting pitcher, Patrick Montverde, just didn't last. I mean, Baylor was able to run him out pretty quickly. He went. Uh, that was one of his few losses this season. Goes four innings and allows seven earned runs. So they won't see Montverde, which is probably a smart thing to do if you're Texas Tech because Baylor ripped him to shreds the last time these two teams play. Checking the box score for the Saturday game between Baylor and Texas Tech, it was Micah Dallas who was unbelievable. Micah Dallas is actually the cousin of Jay Sedwick who's on the Baylor football team. Uh, there you go. He pitched seven innings, had 10 strikeouts, and then Ryan Sublette came in. He's, he was 5-1 and one at that point. He came in and had two innings that were almost perfect. Uh, they, really, they were perfect. Six up, six down in those two innings. He did allow one hit, but the run was out, thrown out on the base path. He struck out one in those two innings. So Micah Dallas shut Baylor down on day two. So you got Montverde, who if Baylor was facing Montverde tomorrow, I'd be like, all right, bring it on. Well, Baylor already hit the crap out of this guy. If Baylor was facing Micah Dallas tomorrow, it would be an okay. 
Okay, we probably don't need to do that. Let's not face Micah Dallas. But then, game three, Baylor, Texas Tech. Losing pitcher in that one for Texas Tech? Well, the winner, I'll tell you, for Baylor was Blake Helton. The loser for Texas Tech? Oh, baby. Mason Montgomery. That dropped him to two and two at that point on the season. He has a he had allowed four earned runs in five and two thirds innings. He struck out eight in five and two thirds, but he allowed those four earned runs, four runs total. They brought in Chase Hampton, who allowed a four quick runs without even getting three outs. Mason Montgomery faced twenty-two batters. He walked a couple of them, uh, and again, those four earned runs. He struck out eight in five and two thirds. Was the losing pitcher of record. So Baylor hit him pretty decently. Four and runs is not bad against a, a, a guy from Texas Tech, one of the top five baseball teams in the country. Tech is hot right now. Their batters are playing well. I am I am not, I don't want to say scared of Texas Tech because Baylor won a series against the Red Raiders on the road. That said, I think Baylor's got a legit shot against a guy like Mason Montgomery to go out there and win. Looking at Tech's schedule down the stretch, since that Baylor loss, they lose the series at home to Baylor. They went to Texas, took two out of three, losing the Sunday game. They played Oklahoma, took two out of three out of four against Oklahoma, including a 13-2 mercy rule and a 15-2 win. Their only loss was 9-8 to eight in 10 innings. Then they went to Kansas, dropped the Friday game, then won the next two, 13-4 and 5 nothing. So in their last group of conference games, they won a series against OU, 3-4, took two of three against Texas, and then against Kansas, how about it, two of three, playing hot. Baylor on the other side of things, oh, quite the opposite, my friend. Baylor looks really good against West Virginia, looks good against Kansas, looks good against Kansas State, Texas Tech. Then they drop a series against Oklahoma State on the road. Then they drop a series at home to Oklahoma. And now Baylor's got to rely on Cam Cayley and their batters to try to put something together tomorrow night or tomorrow morning against Texas Tech at 9 o'clock first pitch. Baylor's on the bubble right now. Baylor has an RPI of 40. If you're in that 30 to 35 range, you're pretty comfortably in. You're kind of bubble, but you're pretty comfortably in. Baylor is not comfortably in. No. Baseball America has Baylor as number three seed. D1 Baseball has Baylor as a three seed as well. They are really liking Baylor going to Starkville for that regional and playing against a two seed like Southern Mississippi. Um, the Bears need a strong showing in the Big 12 championship to make their fourth straight regional under Coach Steve Rodriguez. Two innings stand out for the Bears. With Baylor outscoring opponents 59 to 19 in the opening inning and 44 to 18 in the eighth inning. Baylor scored in the first inning in seven straight games. So they love to score early, and they love to put them up when they matter in the eighth. 44 to 18, they've outscored opponents in the eighth inning. That's unbelievable. The Bears are 37 and 39 all time in the Big 12 Championship Tournament, including a 33 and 31 record while playing in Chickasaw Bricktown. In 2019, Baylor went 1-2 and two in the tournament after winning its first game against Oklahoma, dropping the final two to OSU and TCU. 2018, Baylor won the Big 12 championship title, its first in program history, with a dramatic walk-off win over TCU. Under Steve Rodriguez, Baylor is 5-6 and six in Bricktown. After a slow start to his Baylor career, here's where we're going. After a slow start to his Baylor career, Cam Cayley has become a reliable source on the mound for the Bears. Over his last eight appearances, he has a 140 ERA. I told you. Guys, Cam Cayley was not good to start the year. He's only 2-1. and one. He's got a 415 ERA. But Cayley, the freshman, I'm telling you, like his hat's not big enough for his head. He's a little, he's a smaller guy, but he's so good. He's like, right, I mean, he's one of those young guys you're like, oh, man, look at that guy. He's super young, but he's good at baseball. Cam Cayley, in his last eight appearances, 140 ERA, 25.2 innings of work as a starter and a reliever. Most recently took the role of a series opening starter. After getting the nod on Thursday night against Oklahoma, he hurled five innings and allowed three runs against OU. That was on Thursday night. He opened the series. So the freshman getting a lot of great playing time. The Bears completed a number of feats in the victory over uh, Texas Tech and Lubbock with the series win against the same Texas Tech team they're about to play. It was the first series win over top 10 teams since defeating number eight, Texas. Um... That was in 2018 in Waco. And in addition, it was the first series won on the road over a top 10 team since 05. Since 05, 
Baylor became the first team to win a series at Rip Griffin Park since 2018. Tech, 20-2 and two at, at home entering that weekend. And then three games against Texas Tech. Baylor outscored the Red Raiders 26 to eight. The only time the Bears trailed in the series was in the eighth inning in Saturday, the Saturday loss of that series. Baylor is one of three Power Five teams, along with Vanderbilt and Nebraska, to rank top two in the conference in both batting average and ERA. The Bears are first in the Big 12 in batting average, 14th nationally at 305, second in the conference, and 21st nationally with a 369 ERA. And individually, the Bears have a number of players at the top of the conference. Jared McKenzie, first in runs scored, fifth in the nation. Second in hits, seventh in the nation. And second in batting average. Andy Thomas is third in RBI. Tyler Thomas is tied for second in opponent's batting average with a 202 is all he allows. Fourth in ERA with a 249. And Luke Boyd is third in saves and one of the conference leaders in the Big 12. If Baylor's going to do it, if Baylor's going to pull it off of the Big 12 tournament, the course this weekend, they need to win against Texas Tech tomorrow at 9 a.m. Moving forward from that, they're likely going to get TCU. They were swept by TCU. Can they come out with Hayden Kettler and win that game? Or can Kansas State upset TCU? Best case scenario, Baylor beats Tech, faces Kansas State. Win that game, you're going to get the winner of game 10, so a loser's bracket game. Likely going to get coming out of that probably I would say TCU or Texas Tech. I mean, you're going to need to win. If you win your first two, you're in decent shape. That game three is going to be tough. I think Baylor probably wins the first two, best case scenario, and drops game three. I don't want to get so like, oh, they're going to win them all. Drops game three, uh, then probably has to play the way back up out of a loser's game, which means they'll likely go down and play, I would say, Texas, maybe Oklahoma State. Would love to see them get that shot. If they win that, they go to the championship of the Big 12 tournament. And that's a one-game series, 5 o'clock on ESPN2 on Sunday. So maybe Baylor can pull off some magic. They're on ESPNU tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Make sure to tune into that one. And maybe, just maybe, Baylor gets the win as they move into the 4 o'clock game if they do. If they lose, they will play at 9 a.m. again. Ugh. On Tuesday, on Thursday, I'm sorry. So, Baylor Baseball, Texas Tech tomorrow. There is a breakdown of what you can expect tomorrow in Bricktown. Drake Toll, Armstrong Sims. We got Marquise Cooley and Jack McKenzie when we come back. Celebrity birthdays and this day in sports history. Don't go anywhere. This is Up Tempo.